Hey guys, what's going on? This is Richie here from Red Planet Films, and today I'm bringing you a movie review for Project Almanac. Um, I just actually got out of the theaters from watching this film uh, with a couple of friends of mine, and um, I kind of didn't know what to go, like, what to expect going into this movie. Um, I saw a trailer a couple weeks back, uh, maybe the beginning of this month actually. I didn't really hear anything about the movie um, prior to seeing the, the trailer. Um, although, I did discover that the movie was originally supposed to be called, um, Welcome to Yesterday, um, which I'll get to that in just a, in a little while later on in the review, but, um, <clears throat> it was supposed to come out next, I mean, last year, but, I don't know, I guess some type of delay or something, whatever. Anyway, um, went into it not really know what I was gonna, you know, expect and everything, but, um, it did look interesting enough by the trailer that I wanted to check it out in the theaters, um, and I went in, and I came out, and I thought it was a lot of fun. I really had a lot of fun with the movie. I enjoyed it um, a lot. Um, it has to do with a group of uh, teenagers, a group of friends, and they stumble across these schematics and these directions for a time machine, and then they end up you know, going through it. They're trying to figure out how to put it together, in, in which they are successful in putting this time machine together. And... <clears throat> They end up, you know, testing it out and everything. And I really enjoyed how they um, went about testing it. They, uh, for example, they tried a little Barbie Corvette thing. And I think they even had, like, a Barbie doll inside. And they had a little GoPro on it to see, like, uh, what footage they can get from the GoPro. And um, I liked how they were interested in testing it slowly before doing human trials. Because that's what, you know, any logical sort of thinking would go into um, with a time machine. Any, any you know, anybody with a brain would want to do tests first before, you know, starting human trials. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that was um, very interesting, whereas I think any other movie would have just been like, oh yeah, let's just jump right in and go, and, you know, back t into the past and stuff like that. So I really found that very admirable. And, you know, these teenagers, um, they were kind of like, geeky, nerdy, whatever, I guess if you want to call it. So, um, I, I found that believable that they would actually, you know, um, want to do that. Anyway, before I keep going on, on this tangent, um, it, it was a little slow getting to when they wanted, to when they finally did the time travel to themselves, but, um, when it happened, I thought it was very interesting, um, the, the blend of CG that they had, I didn't think it was, um, I didn't think it looked bad or phony or anything, I actually enjoyed the way that it looked, and, um, another thing is that I also wasn't aware that this was going to be a found footage film, found footage movie, um, I mean, by the trailers it kind of did, but I wasn't still quite sure, because I saw the trailer a while ago and whatever, but, um, it didn't bother me, but then it kind of bothered me in some spots, I'll, you know, fill you in on that later on in this review. But, um, you know, I don't really have a problem with it. Some found footage films I do enjoy. This one reminded me a bit of a Chronicle, in a sense. Um, especially one scene where, um, uh, one of the characters, uh, who's a girl, um, she's holding the camera and then she puts it down, and then, uh, when they're doing one of the tests on the, with the, uh, time machine, it starts levitating, and it was kind of like an excuse thing. And that makes me think back to Chronicle, how one of the guys had a certain power and he was able to kind of um, maneuver the camera in some scenes and everything. Um, so I, I think stuff like that is kind of cool, a little bit of an excuse, if you will, so that they don't have to hold the camera and everything. The only thing that um, really puts me off sometimes is um, not so much shaky cam, because this movie didn't really have too much of it, but... What bothers me is when someone's holding a camera, and it's just a little bit too still. I mean, granted, some cameras now have, like, image stability and stuff like that, but I don't know, I feel like anyone holding it would kind of be just a little bit shaky. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and sometimes the lighting is just, like, too good, or, like, the sound is too good. There were instances where some of the characters were, like, super far, and you could hear them like they were, like, right there, or as if they had, like, a microphone inside their shirt or something like that. You know, stuff like that is, like little minor details that doesn't really matter, but it was stuff that I notice, stuff that I notice in, like, any 
sort of found footage movie, and I, I tend to ruin films for myself a little bit because I overanalyze too many little details and stuff. So I've tried to limit myself when I try and do that, but I mean, you kind of have to when you do a movie review and you, you know, you want to let people know how you feel. But anyway, um, <coughs> excuse me. So moving right along, once they finally got to the uh, human trials, I thought it was interesting. They went back one day, which goes back to what the movie was originally supposed to be, Welcome to Yesterday. Um, there's a line where, <coughs> I believe this is the main character, he said, um, uh, we went back to yesterday, and I like hearing the original title of the film, I think it would have went so well, almost in a sense, because that was their first time traveling back. It was just one day, one day ago. So, I don't know, I, I feel like that would have been, um, that would have that been kind of cool, and then I guess some people would have found that a little lame, because they're using, like, the title of the film in the movie, almost, in a sense. But, um, Project Almanac, I guess, is kind of cool, um, because that's what they labeled this project that they were doing with the whole time machine, when they're, you know, doing their video files and stuff like that. Anyway, um, with the cast, I felt like everyone had some pretty good chemistry with each other, especially, um the main, sort of, I guess they're the main characters, uh, David and Jesse, um, which I felt were the two standouts. Um, Chris, who is the, who plays the sister of David in the movie, I thought she was pretty good, even though her character was very limited, as well as uh, Finn, I believe is his name. I found him to be pretty good. And um, <clears throat> Adam, not so much. I mean, I don't think he was really given anything that he could work with, but whatever he was given, I feel like he didn't really capitalize on it or take uh, advantage of it, in my opinion, but, um, I don't know, maybe it was just something off or whatever, they'd used a bad take, like a, a bad take, yeah, but, I don't know, it could be a plethora of things, but we don't know, but I, I finally, I didn't really find them too appealing, in my opinion, compared to the other characters, but I felt like everyone had a very good, uh, you know, cohesive sort of, uh, unit, so to speak, they were a co cohesive unit, yeah, there we go, anyway, Stam stammering on my words, blah. Anyway, um, the directing I found, you know, to be fine. I mean, it, the movie had its ups and downs, but I found this film to be very fun, um, especially when they started doing the time travel stuff. With these time travel films, it could be very complicated because you can't overanalyze things, and you're like, wait, how does this happen? How does that happen? How does this blah, 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 whatever. So you kind of just have to go with the flow and let things happen naturally and just take it in as it is. Because if you just overthink things, it's just going to ruin everything. If you overthink things with Looper, or Terminator, or Time Cop, or stuff like that, which they um, actually mentioned in the film, which is kind of funny. I thought that was a little cute. It, you know, it just throws everything out of whack, so you just got to take it as it is. But I can understand some people not liking it, especially the fact that it's a found footage movie and everything like that. Another thing about the found footage movie thing that I hate is that uh, I think the Blair Witch Project, or... Uh, VHS 1 and 2 are probably the perfect step-by-step uh, -step procedures that anyone would want to follow when making a found footage film because there's no like um, perfect lighting or perfect sound or um, perfect like music edits or perfect edits in general like for example there's a scene where they go to a concert and even though the scenes are cutting and You'd expect if a song is playing, the song would skip, considering that this, the footage was cut to another piece. The song is just playing in its entirety. Uh, something like that kind of bothers me sometimes, but I mean, it's whatever, it's forgiven. Um, I don't know, stuff like that, just whatever. I can see why some people might find it a little bit irritating, but um, again, it's a film, you kind of just have to... I guess let some things go or whatever, but, um, I don't know. Some instances in this film it irked me a little bit. And there was something that Jeremy Johns noted in his, in his video review, which if you haven't seen, I'll link it down in the description box below, that I found interesting that I didn't even notice when I was watching the film, which I'll get to in just a second. So anyway, Project Almanac, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It has this, uh you know, down points throughout the film, but I find it very entertaining. If you're going in just to be entertained and have fun, I think you'll have fun with this film a lot. Um, my favorite two characters were definitely David and Jesse. I found them to be the most uh, um, into it, 
They gave their all in what they were given. And the rest of the cast was good. They all had a very good chemistry with each other. Very good CG effects. Not an overabundance of it. Um, I didn't really get any Michael Bay um, sort of impressions. Unless you want to count the slow-mo when they're time traveling. But I mean, that kind of goes with it because they're time traveling. And maybe times blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Again, you can't overanalyze these types of things. So anyway, overall, I think I would give this film a 7.5 out of 10. Um, I would definitely buy it on Blu-ray. I would like to check out maybe like a cast uh, and director's commentary or something. Some of the deleted scenes or extended scenes. Maybe there's an alternate ending or some of the behind the scenes on how some of those things were done. Um, I find those things kind of interesting, especially with time travel films. Like, Looper had some very good special features on the Blu-ray. So I'll definitely pick it up on Blu-ray and maybe do a Blu-ray review on that and let you guys know if it's worth the pickup. So anyway, um, that's, those are my thoughts on the film. Let me get back to the thing that Jeremy Johnson in his video review. So if you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to wave my hand. We're talking about spoilers. When I wave my hand again, that means the spoilers are done. Or if not, go see the movie and come back and then let me know what you thought in the comments down below. So anyway, we're talking about spoilers now, so... <clears throat> Something Jeremy Johns mentioned in his review that was a little bit inconsistent that I didn't notice when I'm watching the film was that if you time travel, you it's not really you going back, even though it is, because when you go back, you'll see yourself, and yourself, your past self, can see your future self. So for example, if my future self five minutes from now this is kind of an example that Jeremy Johns used, which was a good one. If my future self five minutes from now wanted to time travel because there was something that I said in this video that I didn't like, um, my future self would kind of just be right here instead of it being my future self. So we'd kind of be interacting with each other, but then we'd kind of freeze up and then we'd just kind of fade out into existence because the time paradox would occur, blah, blah, blah. There's uh, two instances in that in the movie where that happens, um, which I thought was well done, especially the second one, because it happens right after a very emotional scene, which uh, I thought was very uh, good from both actors involved in it. So uh, there's a scene where they're at Lollapalooza, and it's David and Jesse, and they're talking, they're interacting, and she gives them all these signals, which were extremely extremely obvious that even a man like myself who does not get most signals would pick up on immediately or anyone who's like over the age of 13 could figure out that hey this girl was into you kiss her he doesn't which got me extremely mad which therefore gives me the impression that okay I'm mad he's doing a good job at his character and what he's supposed to be conveying in the scene which again goes back to what I said previously David and Jesse were definitely the strong points of this film so, David decides to go back by himself when he made an oath with the others that no one is to go back by themselves. And I wasn't expecting David to be the one to go back. I was expecting maybe Adam or Quinn or someone stupid because they wanted to do something. They wanted to get a girl or something like that. Instead, it ends up being the main character, which makes sense because that you know whole love story was quite evident throughout the film with those two. So... He goes back to Lollapalooza, and he's talking with <coughs> Jesse. However, the same thing is occurring at the same time, except he's laying down all the moves, and he gets her. However, where were the past David and Jesse at? Wouldn't they have collided with them at that point? Wouldn't they have needed to be distracted? You know? There was that kind of inconsistency that I didn't even notice, it just flew over by my head, so it didn't really matter to me, but for some people I could be like, oh, but wait, where's their past so, 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 blah, 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 whatever. So, um, again, like I said, you can't really overanalyze and overthink these time travel films, because they can just be, a, things can get confusing, and then there's too many questions, and too many, ans like, answers that cause more questions, and it could be a mess, so just take it as it is. Anyway, um, like I said, I enjoyed the film. 7.5 out of 10 for me. Highly suggest it, but you know, 
you see it before it gets taken out of theaters or something like that. I'm sure it'll do quite well in the box office during this weekend. Um, definitely compared to The Loft, which I would like to see as well. Maybe I'll have a review for that. So anyway, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Favorite it. Share with your friends, Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media platform that you use. And let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of this film and what you would give it out of 10. And most importantly, subscribe so you can get more awesome videos just like this, as well as a short comedy skit that is coming soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So anyway, all in all has been said, I'm Richie with Red Planet Films, and I'll see you in the next review.